Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Arts Tropical Trade Group, and this is your end of day market recap for Monday, December 2nd. So, first trading day of the month, and it does look like there was some new money being put to work. Uh, I call that just first of the uh, first of the month flows that come on come in. Um, that's all off often by like pension funds. You know, sometimes sometimes they do a little bit of selling at the end of the month, um, and then they buy right back when they have new money to be uh, purchased in the beginning of the month. So it kind of felt like that, um, but um, it felt like that in terms of where the money was going, which was more into uh, Magnificent Seven, or I call them Great Eight names. Um, those were those felt like your your big outperformers for the day. Uh, before I get into any of that risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or, rec or recommendations. Please read the full risk disclaimer right there. All right, before I get into the um, content of the video, uh, Tribeca Trade Group, we are having a, uh, a Cyber Monday sale. So you can go to TribecaTradeGroup.com and um, you could go to our products page. Coupon code for new members, uh, new members uh, is TTG new. You could get 50% off your first month, uh, which I think is a great way to kind of check out um, what we do on a daily basis. Um, it's a great community of traders uh, that, uh, you know, that's part of the draw, I think, of trading, you know, not to be trading alone or, you know, I see so many people ask a lot of questions on Twitter. Like they're almost trying to like trade from people who are mentioning charts on Twitter. I don't know what kind of, like that's a crazy approach. Um, you know, I think like anything else, it doesn't have to be my trading room, but I think, you know, what you want to be doing as a trader is finding a group that you can kind of um, spin some ideas off of and, and uh, you know, get get a sense of like what people are trading. I mean, it's a, it's a really great way to do things. I mean, I started my career on a trading desk. So, you know, that's what you did is you you would converse with other people about the market or about, different trades and ideas and so forth. So that's what I try to, you know, create when, you know, when I moved off of the desk, off of the institutional trading desk, I try to create something um, <clears throat> that had, a, that had a nice flow to it <clears throat> where you can kind of, you know, have a, have a good group of traders um, giving ideas and so forth. And, you know, then what I really try to do is provide guidance, you know, in terms of how I'm trading and, you know, managing risk, you know, I, I was just talking to a trader about that today about you know rather than just focusing on return you have to focus on your risk first and then you can kind of um you know look at things i mean i i respect paul tudor jones a lot who said you know he assume he assumes that when he was trading that that every position that he had on was incorrect right he's always was protecting the downside in terms of you know watching what's going on there so it, it's a very important concept so in, in any event you could you could take advantage and get 50 percent off your first month so you, you can gotta get a nice look over a month to see what we do and what our process is um, and then basically to go from there. All right, so let's talk about um, you know what happened today. So first of all, so so I mentioned um, really nice outperformance. So the Qs finished up 1.1 percent for the day. Spies uh, nothing crazy for the day, uh, up two tenths of a percentage point. And IWM just finished down for the day, which I view as a as a win because at one point I think um, you know the the Qs were up like close to one percent, and IWM was down about one percent. So they did come off the lows of the day. Um, it was not a strong breath today. It was a thirty nine percent up volume day. Now that was better um, from where we started the day, which was around like thirty two, thirty three. So it improved a little bit over the day but um you know really what kind of masked the um the performance was when you're looking at um you know here's my spreadsheet i again i call them the great eight but you could see they they all finished positive for the day and funny that nvidia was the um the worst in the group but um really nice performance you know some of these names and again it kind of just shows you too because these names have many of them have been very stagnant and there hasn't been many opportunities in them except for maybe tesla and netflix which have performed really well amazon as of late Apple has made a late charge too. So, you know, again, there's been, um, it's changed a bit, but you don't ever want to get really 
super down on a group, you know, even though that it's kind of gets frustrating because things could change very rapidly. It's one of the things that, that, you know, I've learned in my career and I try as well to not really get too negative on a group. Cause usually when you get really negative on a group, especially in a bull market, it usually comes back. Hence the semiconductors. So let me talk first about um, the indices first, and then I'll get to some of these, but it is the first that, you know, I keep saying it's the first of the month. It's the second of the month, but it's the first trading day of the month. And price for SPY, right? So the S&P 500 um, started the, the month above the value area. So what does that mean, right? When I talk about the value area and so forth, right? The value area is based on um, like almost one standard deviation of last month's activity when we're on the daily chart, right? So that's all this activity. And when we start to break above like this, we're, we're in price discovery and we're breaking out, right? You see that term on Twitter or X way too often. You hear, oh my God, this name's breaking out. And then I look and the name is like nowhere near 52 week highs. I view breaking out as you're breaking out to new highs or at least breaking out of a range, Right. But I don't I never use the term breaking out or I never use the term like ripping higher when I look at a chart and the name's like below the 200 day moving average or below the 50 day moving average. It's not breaking out. It's moving higher. Right. Be conservative. Um, I, I, but I hate those terms when they're not used uh, the way that I use them or used used appropriately. Um, so in any event, we're breaking higher in the S&P. We're breaking above the value area. We're breaking above the range. So same thing with the Qs. Qs actually started the month inside the value area, but you know they did um, move higher. And I would say that that's a break higher as well. It's almost breaking above the, you know, it's amazing that the Qs haven't are not at 52 week highs, but they're not. When you've got so many groups that are at 52 week highs, and that's something that we went over in the um, in the weekend video. But um, you know, and all all the different groups, consumer discretionary, communications, the financials, you know, not not necessarily all today, but just you know, um, software names, you know, various different groups have been acting well. So we're right at those highs. IWM, like I said, um, it was not a day for IWM, but overall, there's nothing wrong with some consolidation. I mean, this was really strong at the end of November. The level to watch here is 243.78, and that would get you above this um this recent uh you know the range of November. So again, that that number is 243.70, and again, it also seemed like um you know just a I always you know try to recap a little bit about what we've seen recently. You know, it wasn't a, a big small cap growth day. That was more Friday, and you know you have to remember too, like you know again, just taking taking a step back and just realizing. Um, some of some of these things that happen, but the, that uh, Friday, that half a day after Thanksgiving can also can be very whippy. And I think it really was like I saw about six or seven of, of those those high um, high growth, high momentum names act really well. Rocket Labs, IONQ. Uh, the uranium names were acting well as well, but um, you know sometimes it's just that you know sometimes it's it's that can go on when when there's not a lot of players in the market. There's a lot of retail traders pushing names up, and if you look at some of the, these names, you know I mean look at Rocket Labs, you know look at this move back. That's the first break of the five period moving average in in a while. So that one I think is um, I would personally like let this that let that settle down. Um, I like I do like this name I O N Q even though it had a bearish engulfing. I would watch thirty one seventy four. Um, I mentioned I would talk a little bit about Tesla. Um, nice move in Tesla. It did not break to the the highs from about a week ago, but you know really moved very nicely today. And I did get long. I did get long this name on Friday, right? I got long Tesla. So again, like we we talked about this too. Um, I think in uh, one, one of the member videos last week where if you get out of a name and, you know, I did that, right. I got long Tesla, like, you know, on this break of the, of the one hour value area. Um, and then I just kind of noticed that it was building, it took out a VPOC to the downside, you know, and I took this trade off back in here and then I re-added it a little bit lower, um, last week. So that this, this works really well. So if you like, it's different if you don't like a name and you're just, you know, you're just playing a name because, you know, you saw option activity on the tape and, and you're just looking at things in terms of, um, you, you know, in terms of like a one-time trade, but if you're in a name and you're, 
trading short-term signals like I often do, but it's a name that you like and don't think that the move is over with, then, you know, if you get out of it, you've got to, you've got to figure out where you're going to get back in. Um, and for me, that was on Friday, um, you know, saw some option activity, but just looked like it was perking up a bit. And, um, and that works pretty well. And I did take a target in this um, today. So um, I'm ultimately looking for 364, but um, you know, I don't, there's no hundred percent guarantee that it gets there, but um, you know, so re added on Friday and, and, and got the, the full move today, the semiconductors, and we've got some bad news hitting the tape in microchip. I know that's not a name that may be that important to people. It's kind of coming off the lows a little bit, but the semiconductors, they were, they were the strongest area of the day. So this is another one, right? We're in a bull, again, reminder that we're in a bull market and dips get bought. And, you know, here was the VPOC takeout, right? So remember, um, this is so this is the 200 day moving average that's in the picture here this thing has flirted a couple times with the 200 day moving average and it's a, and it's acted like almost like a um like a beach ball going underwater right it breaks under the 200 day moving average and buyers come right back in same thing here oh, this is a this was a actual break a close below the 200 day moving average and it took a couple days later and buyers reemerged this time we did not get a close below the 200 day moving average, but intraday we took out a virgin point of control, right? And that is an area of high volume that we have not revisited. And in, and I often refer to as when, <clears throat> when a VPOC is above, right? That's overhead supply. When it's below, that could be an area of demand. And it certainly was an area of demand price tag this beautifully hammer bar and nice continuation now it's a messy chart so i would stick with the you know the best in breed within this group and um you know so um you know there's a couple names that come to mind cohr it's been acting well um that name found the 200 day moving average and is starting to move higher uh, broadcom we saw a lot of call activity last week now i think that Call activity is probably positioning around its earnings date, which is on the 12th. But as I was looking at this, I said, watch for a move back above the five period moving average. We got that today, and I did add a position in it. Taiwan Semiconductor is another name that we've seen a lot of act uh, call activity all like around here, this area. So nice to see this name get back above its 50 day moving average. Right. Um, you know, uh, what's another name too is ALAB, which is more of a higher risk name. Notice it's just kind of, consolidating here um, and i have a small position in this one as well this is again higher volatility semiconductor so um you know i changed my i um as uh changed my position based on the volatility of the name so that's really where there was some nice performance um in the um in the market today a couple other areas that i'm watching um ctd this is the trade desk I was in this name about about a week and a half ago. I had bought it on the dip um, and I sold once it touched like previous highs. I had a number of positions on. I wanted to reduce a little bit of risk going into month end. But notice how it just kind of hung out here, right? And didn't retrace too much of the position. Really nice move here out to new highs on, on good volume. There was a positive note about Roku and TTD uh, out of Guggenheim, which I think was the one of the catalysts here. But um, there's a little bit of an option buyer here at the end of the day. So, hey, new highs for trading to trade. TTD the trade desk and looked pretty good. Square was another name that had a nice um a nice uh, note out by an analyst. Um, I think it was Bernt Bernstein, but uh, this did not this is not the best looking candle and did not close out the highs. Um, Datadog, right? This was another name that I trade that acted very well on the back of the snowflake earnings, right? Um, and I actually got back involved in this one. So this this was a name that I took profits in. Um, I think like right into here. So again, notice it's not pulling back much. And again, just like what I mentioned with Tesla, if you get out of a name that you like, which I do like uh, Datadog, because look at the weekly chart in Datadog, right? It looks pretty nice, right? Um, getting out of this range. So I want to continue with this move here and see where it goes. So back involved in Datadog today. So giving you a sense of, of what I did today. Speaking of Snowflake, right? I got a nice level for Snowflake. You know, if, if you watch this name go up on earnings and you're like, hey, now what? Well, I would make sure it gets out of its valuary for the year. So again, I'm on the weekly chart right now. And this valuary is for all of 2024. I know we only have one more month to go, but I would watch for one, for a break of 174. 175.73 for this to kind of continue with its move. For right now, it's just at the top of the range. So this is where the heavy lifting has to has to come in play here. 
Um, one other name, you know, or one other group, um, you know, just watching what Urban's been doing. I, I have not traded this name, but look at the follow through on this. This is a good example, by the way, of a name, probably a little bit unexpected, had good earnings. And look at it continue from 46 to over $50. Um, Abercrombie reported last week, it did not have the best close today. But what I really like about Abercrombie is the is the weekly, again, going to the weekly chart here. Notice that this thing is like a giant pennant, flat, pennant pattern um, and an uptrend. So it does look like it's, you know, I drew a trend line in here. It's trying to break higher. Needs a little bit more of a push, but I would watch for the upside here, uh, which was 171.17. And I would watch for a break higher. Um, I'll leave it there now. Uh, for now, um, I want to keep Monday's video kind of short or shorter. Many other names to talk about, but that's it for tonight. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow. And um, hope to see you in the trading room with that uh, Cyber uh, Cyber Monday special that, we've, that we're running.